Hey gents, today we are talking about the best loafers and we're gonna look at loafers that go from the $200 price range up into the thousand plus dollar price range because uh, we're looking for those sweet spots, right? You guys wanna get great shoes that last for a long time that are going to look very good and not wear out too quickly. As many loafer brands as I can in this video that do range from $200 all the way up. And the reason for that $200 price point is that that is where you're going to find the best construction and materials in a loafer to make sure that it lasts for a long time. That's really the goal of this channel is to make sure you're buying fewer, nicer things over time because that ends up saving you money and also helps you to look your best and feel your best. And it's going to make sure that not only do they last for a long time, but they look good as well and they can be conditioned and polished and all taken care of. And I want you guys to consider a loafer because it is a way to elevate your style, but also still be comfortable. So I broke these down into a couple of price buckets. You have your under $200, you have your you know two to $300, then you have three to six, and then six plus in the ultra luxury. So before we dive into the brands, the things you're going to want to look for are full grain or calfskin leather. And when you look at loafers under that price point that are lined with some sort of synthetic or cotton lining, those are the shoes that tend to smell over time and you gotta wear socks with them. But wearing a loafer that has a full leather lining, you don't need socks, you don't need loafer liners or any of that. And it's something that can form to your foot over time because it has those nice materials. That's why I really say that $200 price point is a really nice sweet spot. Before we get into each of the companies and the price points, just a broad overview of the loafers you can look for in general, because many of these companies will offer multiple models. First and foremost, the most classic, you have the penny loafer, and the penny loafer can really be dressed up, dressed down, casual, and fairly formal. Uh, you're not gonna wear it with a tuxedo or anything, but you also will see you know, very casual styles in the Weijin style, which is a very hand-sewn, uh, very casual model, and then you can get something with like a nice, a rounded toe, you'll see these from Carmina, uh, just very sharp looking and elegant looking penny loafers. But I think that's the best starting place is a penny loafer for most guys. Then next you have the tassel loafer. You're gonna see this in a much older guy for now. This is something that I don't have in my collection. I just don't think that I can pull it off yet, uh, but maybe someday. But I would put this category of, uh, you know, kind of flourishes on the top of the loafer, whether you have a tie, like the tie loafer that I have from Jay Butler and Suede, uh, very casual style, or something like this cool ribbon style in the M. Jemmy one. I don't know why I can feel like I can pull this one off more than a tassel loafer, but you have some really unique kind of flourishes to the traditional loafer. You're gonna see the styles that I have in Horsebit from Beckett Simonon and from Jay Butler. And then you have the Belgian loafer. Mine are from Idris. There's the company Belgian Loafers that is the namesake of this style. Uh, I tend to think of these as slippers. This to me is a much more elegant and elevated style of loafer. But those are the broad styles that you will see across all of the loafer companies. So we'll talk about each of the brands and their offerings within each of those price buckets, depending on the styles and your budget as you're looking for great loafers. I definitely made the mistake early on of buying some kind of like casual loafer with a cup sole uh, and just whatever kind of canvas and that sort of thing. I think you wanna look for a nice leather or a suede loafer that it's possible to have restitched. But even then, in some of the $200 shoes that we're going to be talking about, if you get like three or four years out of that, I think that's great. And as long as it looks good too, then think you're covered. So if you want something that's going to look really good and last a long time, definitely stay away from anything that is genuine leather. And to me, some of the fabric stuff doesn't tend to hold up as well over time. And that's a good entryway into what we'll start talking about because there are loafers you can get for around $110. And that's gonna be from GH Bass. They actually have a Harris Tweed Weijin model. And that's one where you'll see, you know, you get a little bit of leather, but then Harris Tweed is a much better fabric than something that you would see in a lower end canvas sneaker. So that's one of the caveats to this, right? And then the next brand that you can start off with in the price ladder is Bass Weijins. Uh, and that's $110. Now, both of these, are made in El Salvador. And to me, this is really like the bottom end of what you want to start looking at. They are at $110, and this really is gonna be the budget. They do have some cool styles. They have plenty of sizing out there, uh, but this is really you know, the base of where you'd wanna start. And these are also both like heritage brands that have been around for a really long time. The next one up the price ladder, and this is where you're really gonna start to see some nicer stuff that will last for a long time, is from Thursday Boots. They have their Lincoln loafer. These are $170 made in Mexico, and they actually have some 
from Excel, Horween leathers, uh, you know, full glove leather lining in there and a cork sole. And this is definitely where you're seeing, you know, the, that price to value ratio start to kick in because those shoes can last for a very long time. I even tried them out, uh, but I had a sizing issue when I did. Next we have Meerman. Meerman takes what you were going to talk about in Carmina and really brings that considerably down in price. I've talked about my issues with the brand in the past, mostly from a customer service fulfillment perspective, but the shoes are absolutely beautiful. If you're in New York, it's really easy to go check them out in Soho. And now that they have that New York office, the shipping exchanges returns are all a lot easier to deal with from my previous videos. And I have been really liking the suede chukkas that I have from them. But Meerman is a really good, I would say, entry level brand where you're getting really high quality materials, really high quality construction, and these are coming in at $195. Next we have Jay Butler. They're also coming in at the $195 price point. These are made in Mexico, and this is truly just like a loafer brand. They have leather, they have suede, they even have some crocodile, ostrich, and alligator, some exotic uh, materials in there. But if you're looking for an amazing loafer at $195, free shipping, a wide range of styles, a ton of sizes, Jay Butler is really hard to beat. The suede ones that I held up in the beginning of the video, I've had those for three years, and I think they're just made impeccably well, and they're really, really hard to beat for the price. The two other brands that really come in right at the $200 price is Jack Irwin. They've had a few different loafers over the years. I've heard mixed things about their you know quality. Tried them a few years ago. I haven't revisited them recently, but they will hit that $200 price point with nice materials. And then my other personal favorite loafer is Beckett Simenon, their Beaumont loafer. I've had this loafer for a couple of years and you can see that it's like formed to my foot. And this is a really good example of a beautiful calfskin leather that ages well over time. I actually haven't taken much polish or, or really conditioned it at all, but a little bit of TLC with these shoes and they're going to be looking great. And these look a lot like a Gucci loafer for a third of the price. And so if you want like three colors of what look like a Gucci loafer, uh, uh, you can go to Beckett Simenon. It's not going to be quite as nice as a Gucci loafer, but the calfskin they use is really beautiful and comes in at $199. All right, so now we're leaving that sub $200 price point. Great shoes in there, but if you want something slightly nicer, we're gonna talk about $200 to about $350. The first one is gonna be Rancor. $240, made right in Maine. This is really like the Heritage US brand that is known for their hand sewing and their beautiful styles. Lightweight loafers, moccasin construction. They also have a made to order program, which takes about four weeks to order. Order. So if you're really looking for something particular, you might be able to get it over at Rancourt. Next we have Ace Marks. They have a loafer that comes in at $299, made in Italy of their beautiful Italian leathers. And this is definitely where you can see the increase in price correlates with an increase in quality. And Ace Marks, everything that I've had from them, whether it's their sneakers, their double monks, or some of their boots are absolutely beautiful. And I know that you guys will attest to that too. Some really beautiful Italian styles with that beautiful calfskin leather. So you definitely want to take a look at Ace Marks. Right here at this price point, I hope I don't butcher the name here, Morjas out of Spain. And this is going to be another one where you're going to be getting some beautiful suede. They also have some thin rubber soles as well and a wide range of sizes, colors, styles, and they have free returns and exchanges in the EU. So if you're outside of the US, you'll definitely want to take a look at these ones. And the last two brands to really top out this price point are Loke 1880 and Allen Edmonds. Loke makes their shoes right in the UK. This is their Whitehall premium penny loafer and it's made, you know, premium calf leather uppers. This one online only ships to the UK, but you may be able to find a retailer that stocks them near you if you're in the US or outside of there. And then Allen Edmonds, you may have seen my video on the channel where I talked about them. They make a lot of their stuff in the US, especially their main line of shoes, but their hand-sewn styles, like their loafers, are largely made in the Dominican because you know, they have an entire factory down there that does a lot of their hand-sewn uppers, and a lot of their moccasin styles and things. And this is a really good example when I was talking about the leathers, Spanish versus uh, Portuguese-made shoes. Uh, the leathers are all imported from fine European tanneries, and so this is where you're really getting the value of Allen Edmonds from sourcing fine European leathers, still making a, a lot of them in the US, but those are gonna come in around that $320, $350 price point. All right, and from here, we're into full luxury. So you're going to be getting the best leathers in the world, beautiful styles, handmade stuff, uh, Italian, English, and, and Spanish manufacturing. And so let's talk about the brands that are in here, and then you can go shop the brands that you're looking for in a particular model or style. First is gonna be Paul Evans. Paul Evans has some of the most beautiful shoes, especially when you look at them on the website, but in person, they have this really rich liveliness to the leathers, and these ones come in at 395. So if you're looking for a loafer that can compete with a Gucci loafer, 
Emperor or something in the Berluti and Ferragamo range. That's where Paul Evans really comes in. Keep an eye on the specific models. Some of them are in stock, but some of them are pre-orders and you have to wait a couple of months to get those because they are handmade to order. And so Paul Evans, if you truly want that luxury Italian quality and feel at the $400 price point, that's a really good place to start. Next, you have Crockett and Jones, the shoe of choice for James Bond. This is their Kensington black calf shoe uh, listed. I'm seeing it online for about $530. Beautiful calf upper. And you're getting that heritage shoemaking of Crockett and Jones, Goodyear welt, beautiful styles and leathers. Uh, but you're gonna pay for that at over $500. Next, we have Carmina. Carmina, the Spanish shoemaker that makes incredible shoes. That again, you're going to be paying the premium for. These ones also come in right around that $500 price point. But if your goal is to get a sleek, excellently made, beautiful shoe, then Carmina is one of the best places to look. An unlined is a way more casual look, but it's also more lightweight, more summer friendly, and a little bit cooler of a way to wear your loafer. Next, we have likely the most iconic out of these. It is the Gucci loafer. And the Gucci loafer, uh, they have a few different models out there, obviously made in Italy and some of the nicest leathers in the world. There is a large part of their shoes where you're paying for the brand, but you're also getting some beautiful stuff. To me, if you want the quality of a Gucci loafer, you can get that in a Carmina, Crockett & Jones, or Paul Evans, but you're not getting the cachet of a Gucci loafer, right? You're not getting the, the colored stripes on the side. And so if that's what is important to you and you want the nice stuff, then Gucci is out there. You can find them in their stores. You can find them at Nordstrom. They're definitely out there. And this is also where you can buy secondhand ones at a pretty good price. And so if you do want that Gucci loafer, if you're a standard size, someone like a nine or a 10, it could be pretty easy to find those on eBay or elsewhere. And so Gucci's out there. I think you can get way, you know, just as nice as shoes for a little bit less in the ones that we just talked about. Stepping up the price ladder here, we also have Ferragamo. Ferragamo also has an iconic logo and silhouette associated with their loafers. More of a lug style on those, but you're gonna be looking at these ones again in that $1,000-ish range, depending on where you're buying from. Right now, there's a lot of sales. But if you're looking for the cachet of the brand, then Salvatore Ferragamo is out there. Then we step a little bit further into what becomes the you know bespoke, beautiful, handmade, incredible quality shoes, both Edward Green and John Lobb. And you're gonna be paying about $1,200 for a pair from Edward Green and about $1,500 from John Lobb. And this is where I have no personal experience with a shoe of this caliber and quality. So I'm just going to put out there that if you want the best made shoes in the entire world, these are two of the brands that are delivering it. And to get that in the loafer style, those are out there. If you want more of that, that's more like Kirby Allison speed. I just know he did a huge unboxing of some John Lobb shoes. But for me, and I think where you guys really land at is to focus on that value, quality, price point down in the just about $300 range. You know, I think Allen Emmons is a great place to start. I think Ace Marks is really nice if you already know you want loafers. And if you're just trying to experiment with loafers and incorporate them into your style, then that's where Beckett Simonon, Jay Butler, and some of those entry level price ones are going to come in. Because for me, I hadn't really worn loafers. You know, I was much more of a sneaker. Uh, you know, I was, I was a Vans guy. I moved into the minimalist sneakers. And now, once the summer hits, all I want to do is wear just a pair of nice loafers because it really elevates your style. And it's not really over the top. You know, a nice pair of loafers can just look really good, slightly elevate your look, and they're just as comfortable, if not more comfortable, than a standard pair of sneakers in my eye. Especially once you have the time to break them in, they're gonna feel amazing. So there you have it, gents. I hope you guys try to incorporate some loafers into your style. If you're looking for a great brand, uh, let me know what you're gonna grab. I'll see you guys down in the comments. Always appreciate your feedback. Also, if you have any direct questions, I can answer them down below. You can also reach out at the underscore Cavalier on Twitter and Instagram. Love to hear from you guys over there. And until next time, gents, this is the Cavalier.